what I want you to do as leaders is I want you to picture your organization as a bus. Now, this bus represents all your goals, everything that you want to achieve, all that you want your organization to do. But the problem is the bus has no gas. So we, as the people who you work with and you, you have got to move the bus yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut holes in the floor, we're going to put our feet down, and we're going to move the bus. Now, in every organization, you've got some runners, and they're your best. The runners are flat killing it. They come early, they stay late, they're positive. Runners don't complain. Runners don't talk about other people. When runners look at the school, they see positive. When runners look at a corporation or a business or a university, they see the good. Because runners have a desire. They want to be part of something special. They really want to contribute and build something special together. They do an awesome job. Then you've got some joggers. Now, the joggers are doing okay. Now, they're not sprinting like a runner, but the joggers do okay. They do a good job. They do their work. They'll be a little negative sometime. They're not really a runner, but the one thing about a lot of joggers, they think they are. If you ask them, they'll tell you, oh, I'm a runner at this organization. I'll do these book signings, and teachers will come up, and, and they'll say, yes, I want to get my book signed. And they'll say, you know that story you tell about that bus? I'm one of them runners. And I'll think, hmm, jogger, <laughs> because... <laughs> Because usually runners don't go around saying, I'm a runner. So then you've got joggers, and then you've got a problem. You've got some walkers. And the walkers in our organizations, they're kind of being pulled by the bus. They're like, why are we going so fast? Slow down. Y'all are doing the most. The walkers want everyone on the bus to slow down because you're making them uncomfortable. You're making them have to go faster. They don't want that. They want everything to slow down, and they're negative. I work with this teacher. All she did all day, she wanted to talk about the principal. She hated the principal. She'd say this. She'd say, hey, come here, come here. Did you see? Sleeping Beauty came in at 10 a.m. this morning. We can't come in at 10 a.m. We got class at 8. How's that make you feel? How's that make you feel? She'd always say, how's that make you feel? And I would say, bad. Because I was afraid of that woman. <laughs> and she would say, hey, did you see? We're going to have to do extra carpools. You know what? Breakfast duty is coming next. We're being treated like slaves. How does that make you feel? I was like, I hate it. Because I didn't know what else to do. I wanted to turn to her and say, why are you so negative all the time? <sighs> I couldn't. All I could say was, yeah. So I agreed with her, and then I would walk away. But I learned something important. A lot of times when we're negative and people agree with us, they're disagreeing with you, because they, but they don't like it very much. They don't like you very much. And then they'll walk away. But it's very rare you'll find someone who will say, stop being so negative. But people think it all the time. You're sitting here thinking, oh, I know negative people. But think about every time you're being negative, people are hearing you as well. And that's what walkers do. They're negative. This teacher, whenever we would hire new teachers to the school, you know what she would do? She'd take them a bunt cake. She'd go in there with that bunt cake and she'd say, well, I just wanted to bring this to you. And I want to let you know I'm going to share my school supplies with you. And you know what all those first-year teachers said? I love her. I want to be just like her. That was who they thought they should be emulating. And it was horrible because all she was doing was building her posse of poison. Because what she would do... She wanted to have more people like her. And as soon as they came in, she would get them around her. She would eat at lunch with them every day like this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what she was doing was she was teaching them a skill. She was showing them how to see the school in a negative way. When you look at your business, your business has problems. Your university has problems. Corporations have issues. We all have issues. But I work at the best school in the world. And we got issues too. Everyone has issues. So what you have to do is you have to choose what are you going to do in your life? Are you going to see all the negative or are you going to see all the positive? It's a choice that you all have. Some people choose to see everything that's bad and to talk about it. Some people say we're blessed to be here. Let's work on this. This is awesome. And so what she was doing was she was showing them how to be negative. And you know what? We hired these three brand new female teachers right out of college and she had them wrapped all around her. And she would be so negative with them. And you know what? They were going home too. I, I pictured it. I said they're going home to their husbands and they're saying this well the principal came at 10 a.m this morning and we're gonna have to do extra breakfast duties because once you have gotten into a pattern of seeing negativity you're gonna spread negativity and i bet those husbands were going mm-hmm uh-huh just like i was then they walked away they don't like it very much then the marriage i figure was gonna start having problems because she was being negative but then she's gonna be like us all of a sudden i don't know what's happened and then they're gonna try and have kids to make it work out i figure and what's gonna happen <laughs> The kids are going to end up being discipline problems in school because there's so much negativity in the home. Then they're going to get divorced. And then she's going to end up in the rest home one day and nobody's going to come visit her. She's going, why ain't nobody coming to visit me? It's because she saw the world in a negative way. And so <laughs> what happens is that 
these walkers don't understand how devastating they are. And they're making the rest of us have to run f faster because they're going so slowly. But then an even worse problem, we have riders in our organizations. Riders have picked up their feet, they're sitting cross-legged, and they're dead weight. And they're like, why ain't we there yet? This bus stinks. And they're negative. And they're not part of this passion. They're not part of the mission of what we're trying to accomplish. They're not with it. And we wish they would leave, but they won't. And what we do as leaders, what we do is we tend to look at our bus and we say, my runners are killing it. They're fine. My joggers, eh, they're, they're doing all right. Oh, the walkers are problems. And then I got these riders. And we as leaders will tend to focus and think about the riders and it bothers us. And we're, we're in bed at night. And what can I do to fix the rider? We put so much energy on that rider. It's a waste of our time. Because when I was teaching and I was leading, I said, I've got to figure out a way to get all these teachers where they need to be. And I saw this one teacher who was riding. I said, I be darn. She might not run. She might not jog, but she going to walk. I'm going to get her up. Because all she did every day was sit at her desk and pass out worksheets. And so I put all my energy and effort in her. I said, come on, let's do this project. Come on, let's co-teach. Come on, let's decorate your door. She said, if you do, you're just going to have to take it down before you know it. I said, no, I'll take it down. Let's put this door up. And I put a month of my life into that woman. At the end of the month, you know what? She was walking. I made her better. But it took all I had. And I stood back and looked at my whole school. And you know what I found? I changed nothing. By helping a rider to walk, you are not going to affect your school. You're not going to affect a university, a, a corporation, a business. The only way to get true results is to go to the runners, to fire these runners up, and to get them running faster. Because if you get a runner running faster, that's going to spread energy, and that's how we're going to see change. And so what I started doing was I started going to my runners. I said, what do y'all need? More supplies? What do you need? you need more of this, more of that? And my runners would say, no, I don't need anything. I'm good. I'm good. Because they don't want help. I said, no, I want to help you. I said, show me what you're doing. And they would show me their plate of all they had going on. And I'd say, you know what? I'm going to take this away from you. I'm going to get someone to do this for you because that's a waste of your time. And what does a runner do when you take something off her plate? She puts something else on. And I was just teaching them how to manage their time. I got money for five people to go to a conference. I said, you know what? I'm sending that five. My runners, they're going. And I had one of the teachers come to me who was a walker, and she was by the coffee machine. And she said, oh, well, Mr. Clark, I see you take care of your runners I said, excuse me? She said, no, 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 it's fine. I said, you take care of your favorite. She sent them to that conference. She said, we get it. It's just we didn't even know that we had the opportunity to go to that conference. I said, you didn't. I said, I said, I said what are you talking about? Just like the entitled youth of America, they expect so much, adults expect so much too. And so I had to go to my, to my staff meeting and say, you know what? Everyone in this school is going to be treated fairly, but you may not be treated equally. The ones who work the hardest, the ones who do the most, they're going to get the rewards. If I get a new classroom set of computers, it's going to go to the teacher that uses technology and the one who's put in the work to earn those computers. Everyone shouldn't deserve it just because you're here. We have to work hard. And so uh, one final thing I learned is that when I looked at my school, I realized the people who made the most mistakes were my runners. And I was like, why are my runners making so many mistakes? And I learned it's because they were doing 100 things. If you're at the circus and you're spinning 100 plates, you're going to have three plates drop. It's fine. You can let three plates drop. It's okay. I, I have a rider spinning two plates. She'll drop three of them. But if you're a runner... <laughs> You're going to drop some plates. And in this room right here, we have a lot of leaders who are runners. And you know what you do? You make a mistake, and you know what? You won't let it go. You wear it right here. And you think about it, and it bothers you. Who do you think you are? You're going to make mistakes. When you make a mistake, you've got to realize it's okay. Because if you wear that mistake, you can't run. One year, I made a really bad mistake. I was emailing back and forth with this mom. She had a kid with some special issues. And she said, Mr. Clark, I want you to let the teachers know about his special issues. I said, okay, no problem. So I put confidential in the subject line, and I emailed the staff. I said, the mom wanted me to share this with you. Well, I sent it out. I started getting these emails pop back. And it was like, Mr. Clark, I think you sent this in error. Mr. Clark, I don't think this was meant for me. I had sent it to the parents of the, of, of the class. I had sent it out, yes, it was a crisis. I was like, oh, no, I was like, how do I get an email back? Oh, my gosh. I was freaking out. I was like, what do I do, what do I do? I said, like, oh, no, no, no. And this email popped up. It was from a parent. She said, Mr. Clark, I want you to know I didn't read the contents below. And she was the nosiest woman. I know she read it. So I was like, oh, my goodness. And so I was like, what am I going to do? I said, I have to quit. I said, I should quit my job. I have no right, do it. 
I, I, how can I do something? I said, I cannot email this woman. I cannot call her. I've got to go tell her to her face. And she's going, she's going to slap me or spit in my face. I said, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. So I go and I sit in my car and I'm at her apartment. I didn't want to walk up there. I go, okay. So I get out of my car and I walk up to the apartment. I knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. And she opens the door and she said, Mr. Clark, what are you doing here? I said, I made a really bad mistake. She said, Mr. Clark, are you talking about that email? She said, that's fine. Everybody know he ain't right. <laughs> I said, no. I said, this is horrible. I can't believe I did this. This is so horrible. I said, I'm gonna, I am gonna. need to quit. She said, Mr. Clark, really? She said, now maybe everybody will help me. They will see what I'm doing. They will help me. I said, no, I'm so sorry. So she was great. But you know what, y'all? I wouldn't let it go. I wore it everywhere I went. I would open my email, my computer to emails people, and I'd remember it and my heart would sink. When I emailed people, I was like, now who am I sending this to? I would see parents in the lobby and they would look at me and I was like, are they wondering if I'm gonna send out their personal information as well? <laughs> I couldn't let it go and I stopped running because I was so miserable and disappointed in myself that I didn't have my normal or my power, my passion. I just let it pull me down and slow me down. And what's going to happen, if you wear your mistake, you're not going to run. You're not going to be a good leader. You're not going to be a good husband, a good wife. You're not going to be a good parent. you got to allow yourself to forgive yourself and let it go. And then you can run because that's the true objective of what we're trying to do with our organizations. We're trying to get them to run. And when you fuel your runners, when you let them know you're valued, that's when you're going to have the most success.